this is in the pasture um, where we have our horse in front of the house and we have the beautiful purple flowers that grow wild here this time of year in western Kentucky and uh, I'm sure um, other regions check in your area and see if you have this it is called ironweed and we have several patches of it out here in the pasture and uh, we'll get a close-up down here where it's a little closer to the fence so um, the um, ironweed is uh, mostly good for uh, female issues but there are other issues too that it's good for we'll talk about um, I haven't used this before because when I looked it up a couple of years ago it uh, the main thing I saw that it was good for was female issues and um, I haven't had a use for it uh, for myself and um, so I didn't haven't used it at all but uh, I have used it as a wildflower in a, a wildflower bouquet arrangement because the flowers are beautiful and um, along with um, oh gosh right now we've got Queen Anne's lace and goldenrod and uh, other flowers that um, grow wild around here this time of year uh, I have put it in bouquets with anyway um, so um, this year, I have decided to go ahead and make a tincture out of it. I have been building a um, kind of uh, my own little pharmacy uh, or uh, my own um, uh, for my medicine cabinet. I have been making all kinds of different tinctures uh, to uh, keep on hand for when they're needed. And if you make them in a tincture with alcohol, uh, I use 100% cheap vodka, and uh, that will last forever. So, um, so I make it with the uh, vodka and keep it on hand, and I label the jar. I, I usually just make it in little jelly jars because it usually doesn't take very much uh, for a dosage. So I keep it in. Uh, I keep them in jelly jars. And then I label it. I label my jelly jars. I'll show that here in a minute when we go to make this tincture. Um, I label it in jelly jars and I put on it what it is, what's mixed with it, because sometimes I do use oils and they don't last as long um, as the tinctures. The tinctures with the 100 proof alcohol, uh, 100 proof vodka, or any other alcohol uh, will last for just many, many, many years. So here's one right here beside us. And I will take this one to the house. Oh, along with the little caterpillar. <laughs> I'm going to shake him off if I can. Get him off of there. All right, there we go. Now, this is what it looks like up close. And uh, there's the flowers. I don't know if that is focusing in good. But there you go. That is ironweed. Okay. Uh, it's good for um, PMS, for uh, girls' problems with PMS, uh, heavy, um, heavy menstrual cycles. I have read that it was used by the Native Americans during childbirth. Now, what I would probably use it for for that would be to dry it and use it as a um, tea. But uh, the reason I'm not going to do that is because if I dehydrate this and dry it, it won't last as long. And I don't know that this will be used anytime soon here. So I need something that will last a good long time in case it's needed. And I have a lot of granddaughters. <laughs> I have granddaughters that age from uh, 1 to 21. And so I thought it would be good for me to have this on hand for any of the granddaughters that happen to be here and have that problem. Or um, 
something like that. So also, I'm going to use the leaves and the flowers, but you can also use the roots of this. The whole plant is medicinal. Now, it's not edible because it is a bitter, but if you needed it for a bitter, for uh, digestion and, uh, and diarrhea, you would just make a tea out of that and use it for digestion and diarrhea as a bitter. We've got plenty out there in the pasture, so I may dig some up out there. Or this one, I don't know, uh, but I'm going to get the leaves and the flowers off of this one right now to start uh, in a uh, tincture. Now, I may dig up some of the root and do a root tincture also. Um, but as I, this is one of those things that I don't know how much this would be used here. So, I'm going to make a tincture instead of dehydrating it. So there you go. Now we will get this up to the house and maybe talk a little more about it. Okay, so we are back up at the house with this ironweed and uh, I am gonna start peeling off these leaves and I just kind of dust them off good for any bugs or anything. I'm not washing them thoroughly. Um, they're not sprayed with anything or anything like that. I know where, you know, where they came from, there's nothing on them except maybe a few bugs. So I'm just wiping them off good. I already shook them off a little bit, but I didn't want to shake too hard and shake all the blooms off. So I just uh, shook them a little bit. And now I'm just wiping each leaf some and breaking them up and putting them in my little jar. And I'm going to use some of the bloom also and just cut those up with scissors into that jar. So I'm just cutting these up, these bloom tops, cutting some of those into the jar and some of the leaves. I don't need a whole lot because this is gonna last a long time and uh, we're not gonna use it probably much. <laughs> uh, but I want it on hand just in case, because you never know and uh, you never know if uh, we're in a bad situation and can't get to uh, a drugstore for any kind of uh, medicines and someone needs this for uh, whatever, whatever reason might come up, especially with granddaughters and this being good for female problems. So I'm gonna break this up until I have about three quarters of a jar and I will also dig up some of that root and make a tincture with the root for uh, anything like uh, that you would use bitters for like digestive and uh, diarrhea. Uh, it's also supposed to be good for fever. So I'm gonna check more into that. You know, this is new to me too. Uh, like I said, I checked it a couple of years ago and it was good for female problems, so I didn't bother with it too much. But in uh, upon more research, finding out that it's good for some other things and having granddaughters, I decided to go ahead and use some this year. You do use uh, the root for certain things, so I will be digging up, um, digging that up for root. Uh, make a tincture out of the root. So also, I was talking about the other uh, uh, things that I use. I have made a whole medicine cabinet with uh, tinctures because they last uh, forever. So uh, some things I use in oil, like uh, I did do, um, here's calendula uh, in oil to make soap with. So this will be used in calendula soap, and it is an oil. It's past time to make soap with that, so I need to get on that right away. Set that back there to, to get on. Um, I have a mullen tincture. I made a bigger jar with the mullen. Excuse the grandkids and dogs in the background there. I made a tincture with the mullen. I made it in a bigger jar because we will use this more. Uh, it is good for uh, coughs and colds and 
and flus and uh, also for people that smoke to uh, help clear out their lungs. Uh, so there's that. Uh, this one is Self Heal that I started and um, the Self Heal is good for lots of things. We have a video on that, so check that out. I made it in a bigger jar also because it's good for so many things. Uh, this one is Evening Primrose. Evening Primrose is good for a lot of things. I know I keep saying that, but e the reason I done the Evening Primrose is for uh, hormones, menopause and hormones. And um, I haven't used a lot of it because I have other things that are also good for that. And I started taking uh, some other things that's good for uh, hormones. Um, it is a tincture so that it would last a long time. I take a, an evening primrose uh, uh, peel capsule uh, gel cap that is uh, in the oil. <clears throat> I did do an evening primrose oil before, but I didn't use it uh, fast enough. And so I went ahead and done a tincture so that it would last longer. And if I, it's ever needed, if I run out of everything else for my hormones, I have this. So there you go. And we will do a video on evening primrose in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have that growing wild here and uh, it is blooming, just started blooming, so I will be making a video on that real soon. Um, goldenrod, here is a goldenrod tincture. It is good for um, any kind of sinus allergy. A lot of people think that goldenrod causes um, allergies in, 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 the, in the fall when it starts blooming, but I have learned and or research shows that it's not the goldenrod that causes the allergies, it's the ragweed that grows the same time as goldenrod. And if you use goldenrod, it will, uh, it will uh, help with that. So, I made a tincture with that because Lee really does get bad sinus and allergy stuff in the fall. No, all the time. Lee gets bad sinus and allergy stuff all the time. So I made that as a tincture also. And um, and I, I think I made this, yeah, 2020. I made this in 2020, but it will last forever like that. So we have goldenrod. Um, I may this year make a bigger jar of this because that would be a really good one uh, for sinus allergy. And since Lee has such problems with sinus allergy, he may start using, he may end up using this all faster than I expect. I don't know. He doesn't like to take things, so it's hard to say <laughs> whether he'll take it or not. Uh, he doesn't like to take anything. So, uh, and I really don't either, but I definitely will for, um, you know, I do. I definitely do uh, take things to help me um, just feel better and get through things like that better he will suffer through okay so another thing that this can be used for is um, for hemorrhaging and for anything blood issues I assume that is why it is good for um, menstrual for heavy flow it can reduce the heavy flow of menstrual period so that's also why the Native Americans used it for uh, women during childbirth to uh, ease that blood flow, to slow that blood flow. So keep that in mind. There you go. All right, so what we're going to do to make this tincture, <clears throat> I'm going to open my 100% vodka, and uh, I would like to have a little more material in here. I'm going to go get some more flour, and then we will just pour it to the top. And I'm not gonna do that because I wanna go get some more flour in here. I'll just pour it in there. I normally would fill it to the top after I get my all the material I want. I only want it about three quarters full of material so that you've got plenty of room for the alcohol. And uh, then you can put a lid on it and let it set, label it well so you know exactly what it is and when and, and what it's good for and maybe even the dosage, if you can find the dosage. I don't have the dosage on this to tell you, but the dosage would be different for different 
things and different people. So I probably won't put that on this. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's how I'm gonna make a tincture with that. I'm also gonna do the root in a tincture for other, for the digestive type problems. And any of it, I'm sure all of it is good for the same, um, you know, the same issues. This is jasmine. It smells so wonderful. Jasmine grows wild here in Western Kentucky also. And Lee brought me this in last night and it smells so good. We love the wild jasmine around here. So everybody that thought me and Lee don't do anything but argue, <laughs> it's not true. He actually uh, makes stuff for me. He's always picking me stuff like this to bring in. It's really sweet, although he's very aggravating. It's very sweet. So, and here's his watermelon. Here's one of his watermelons he's proud of. We had have had a hard time growing watermelon before, and uh, he has worked with that soil very good, uh, loosening it and amending it till he finally has grown some watermelons this year. And he's real proud of that, so I wanted to show that. And so there you go. Uh, make you some tinctures. Make you a, um, a whole pharmacy of different tinctures that you can make. And if you use, if you make tinctures, they'll keep forever. Label them well so you know what they're for. And uh, there you go. Uh, watch us on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time for more foraging. <laughs> um, give us a comment, thumbs up, and subscribe.